Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I'm going to go over this uh, user guide article on how to set up a uh, mailing campaign with letterprinting.net. Um, this is a company that we uh, use or have used. Um, we don't officially endorse it or anything, but we have used this uh, quite a bit for our mailings. And so uh, I want to walk you guys through how to set up a campaign with them because they are pretty affordable at this time. Um, and they do offer quite a bit of services that we utilize. For example, if you want a uh, to mail out a letter, you know, with a thicker envelope, with a heavier envelope, and put a stamp on it, they will. They have those options, um, and that's what we do. Uh, as well as you can get linen envelopes and things like that. So they have many mailing options, and uh, you can set it up however way you want. Uh, but I'm going to go over how, what we do. And how we use that. Now, um, they can change their um, system at any time, their website layout. This is how it looks currently. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to actually register for an account. So you want to click on Login Register and fill in the form to register if you haven't yet already. Um, once you do that, 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 that account is free, uh, but you do need to have it. And then you want to log in and create your order. I'm not going to show you how to create an order because... Um, that, that involves, you know, what kind of stamps you want to use, what kind of envelopes you want to use. What I want to show you is after you create the order, they're going to require two things from you. They're going to require your template that you want to use and the data list that you want to use. And that's really what I want to focus on today is how do you get that letter template and the envelope template to them in the format they want, as well as get the data list in a format that they want so that you can do your mailing. For you, so this video is um, uh, kind of comes after you already placed your order, and uh, ITI or LetterPrinting.net they are requiring you to now send them your letter and envelope template uh, in a PDF version. That's what they require, and then they want you to send them the data list. And I'm going to show you how to prepare that. So in the investment dominator, you want to go to your list. And click on land deals, or if you're doing house deals, you click on house deals. Uh, in this case, I'm going to click on land deals, and then I'm going to click on generate documents, okay? When I go to generate documents, every uh, property record that I have in my system that is under the prospect status, so these are the, the records that I just recently imported into the investment dominator, they're going to be in the prospect status, and they're going to fall under this prospect neutral letter. Now, as you know, or you probably know, uh, you can go ahead and generate your mailing here by clicking on this uh, PDF or doc um, option and downloading your letters and downloading your envelopes. What this will do is it actually creates the mail merge for you. So all your letters are pre-mail merged uh, in this manner. But this is not something that you can send to letterprinting.net or any other uh printing house, print house, uh, because what they want to do is they actually do the merge on their end. So instead, if you're going to use a, a print house, and in this example, I'm going to talk about letter printing net, uh, but other print houses have a similar uh, way of doing things. Uh, what you're going to want to do is export the data. Now, there is a reason why we have a separate export function. If, uh, if we go back a step here to the land deals area, you'll notice that there is an export option on that screen. But this one actually exports every property regardless of the status. Uh, when you're under the generate documents uh, section, however, um, this export option only applies to this um, this group of people that are in the prospect status, okay, which is going to be your mailing. Um, so you want to go ahead and click export data, and this is going to download a uh, CSV file for you, um, and it just looks like this. It only contains really the fields of information that you're going to need in your mailing. Um, so you got your owner's first name, you got your company name, got your address of your owner, uh, state zip, and APN that's also used in the um, in the mailing. And then you've got your county, your property state. This is also used in your letter template. And then here you've got your uh, reference number. This is also printed on your letter and your envelope. And I'll show you where. 
So this is the, the list, and it only contains, uh, like I said before, it only contains the prospect records uh, or records that are in the prospect status, uh, which should be the ones that you just recently imported into the system, which are you know now ready to, to get mailed out. All right, so you've got your list right here. You actually don't uh, want to open it up in Excel like I just did. You just want to save it to your computer and then upload that list to letterprinting.net as is. You don't want to you know, alter it um, in Excel because it can reformat your APNs like you're seeing here. So these are the APN numbers, but you can see Excel right here is reformatting them. So um, I don't even open it up in Excel uh, when I'm sending it over to letterprinting.net because I want to just send them the raw data um, without uh, any alterations from uh, from Excel. All right, but let's talk about the second thing that letterprinting.net requires and most other um, print houses require, and that is your letter template. All right, so um, now, like I said, the one, the template that you download here is actually your already merged letters. So if you have 500 people under the prospect status, you're going to have 500 uh, letters under here. That's not what you want to send to uh, letterprinting.net. What you want to do instead is go over to the land deal section again, and let's go ahead and pick one record, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter what record it is. Just pick a record, and you want to select it, and then you want to go ahead and you want to click Generate Documents, but this time click the Generate Documents that is above the data table. What this is going to do is it's only going to generate one document for you okay uh, for one person so you got the one person selected here and now if I click the the word document option I'm going to be able to open up a word uh, formatted letter um, just going to that one person so you can just see, see here I'm going to click enable editing at the top um, so I can get my images in here but um, I've got one letter only I don't have 500 letters I have, just have one letter Okay, and it's in a editable uh, format in, in Microsoft Word. So all I need to do now is switch out the fields of information. There's, a, there's just a few fields of information, but I need to use uh, letterprinting.net's uh, format. So and now this may change from time to time, so you do need to check in with them about this. But as of uh, the recording of this video, the format that they require is basically using these greater than or less than signs around the fields that are in your um, spreadsheet that you're going to send them, in your .csv file that you're going to send them. So in this spreadsheet right here, you can see that the ID that we want to print on the letter in the envelope is actually called OR underscore ID. So what letterprinting.net wants you to do is write that OR underscore ID on your template that you send to them. So we're going to take this template here and we're going to, instead of the actual number, I'm going to put uh, less than twice and then I'm going to put in ORID or OR underscore ID and then I'm going to put in the, the greater than, greater than sign. And that will actually put in, uh, that's what they call, that's the format of their merge field so that when it hits their system, instead of printing out ORID, they're actually going to print the number that's associated with the record they're on. Okay, so they're basically going to do the mail merge on their end. So the other thing is you want to do that for all the fields that are changeable. So for example, the other field that's changeable is the, the property APN, which is P underscore APN in your list. So right here where it has the APN number, we're going to just put it in the merge field by typing it in. Uh, and we're using the format that letterprinting.net wants. Um, so now, again, the first name is used right here. So we're going to switch that out with a merge field. It's also used right here. Um, and then if it was a company, we can use the company merge field here as well. Um, because you'll notice that um, you'll notice that if there's no company, then and it's just blank. Um, and we'll put that up here as well. Uh, and then we'll take the last name and we will put it up here. Make sure there's a space in between. 
uh, in between these different fields. Uh, and then we're going to take the address, mailing address here, and put that right here. We're going to take the uh, mailing address 2, give it a space, put that right next to mailing address. And then we've got the mailing city, which is right here. Switch that out with a merge field to keep the comma in there afterwards. Uh, and then uh, we'll put the state in there as well. Okay, and then we've got the zip code here. All right, now uh, the rest of the things that we see, we see we have the county right here, the name of the county, which is this one right here is P underscore county. So we're going to switch out that with the actual name of the county. Make sure there's a space in between that and county. And then here's the state of the property. So that's in our list. It's called P underscore state. So we're going to take that and we're going to go put in this uh, these merge fields, and then just go through the um, just go through the letter again um, and it should be that that's all the things that you should um, need to change. Now, the other requirement that letterprinting.net has um, is that you don't send them a Word document. They don't uh, accept Word documents. What they do accept is PDFs. So here's what you're going to want to do. You want to actually go and click File and then Save As. And then you want to go ahead and uh, find out where you're going to save this as. All right, I'm going to put it under the letter printing folder I have here. And then right where it says save as type, I'm going to change that over to PDF. Okay, so as you get this, this uh, save as type, it should say PDF. I'm going to click save. Um, now, I'm going to go to do the exact same thing to the envelope. So if we go back to the investment dominator, you can see that uh, there is a download envelope option right next to that. And again, we want to download this envelope template as a Word document. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to open it up in Word and uh, click enable editing at the top. That's very important. And again, we're going to switch this information out with the actual merge fields. Now, the good news is we don't have to do much here because we actually did most of the work on the uh, letter. So I'll just open the letter again and copy all these fields right here at the top uh, because that's basically the owner and the names and everything and the address. Go back to the template here and paste that in there. Um, now, I did have a little missing... Um, character there that I needed to fix. The other thing you can see is it's aligned wrong. So I'm going to highlight this and align it over to the left. All right. Now the last thing we have to do on the envelope is basically switch out the reference number. And again, that's uh, you can find that on your spreadsheet it's called OR underscore ID. So again, I'm going to switch this out with their merge field. And now essentially the letter template is ready to go. So again, we're going to click file, save as, we're going to locate where we're going to put the file, and then we're going to change the save as type to .pdf or PDF. So we click save. That saves it as a PDF. Now, let's take a look at what we're going to send to letterprinting.net. We've got two PDF files. One is going to be our letter. Uh, it's right here. So here's the PDF of the letter. It's got their merge fields. Uh, but the merge fields, the names of the merge fields exactly match the list that we're going to send them as well. Okay, everything else that's kind of static, it, you know, doesn't ha it is not indicated by a merge field. Uh, but everything that's going to be changing per person is going to be indicated by these uh, less than, greater than signs. And then we'll take a look at the envelope over here. It's the same thing. Uh, everything that's static, like our company information over here on the left-hand side, that's always going to be static, but the uh, names and addresses of the owners are going to be different and the reference numbers. So now we've got the two templates in a PDF version, and this is what uh, letterprinting.net should accept at the time of this recording. Um, and so you're going to send them the three things. You're going to send them the file that you downloaded from from the investment dominator. And I'm going to pull that right now so you can see what it looks like. I'll just put that in here. You can see this is the file I downloaded from the investment dominator. Again, I got that from going to uh, 
land deals in this case, and then clicking on generate documents, and then downloading uh, this file where it says export data. It's under the prospect neutral letter uh, line here. Okay, so now what we do is in our order ticket with letterprinting.net, we're going to attach these three files, the letter template in a PDF version, the envelope te uh, template in a PDF version, and our data list uh, in a .csv uh, format. And uh, with these three files, letterprinting.net can um, do your mailing. Um, and then forward going, when you have a new mailing, all you have to really do is copy your previous order with them, and then you're going to upload your new list, which again, you're going to download the exact same way uh, under the Generate Documents section. And the envelope doesn't change, so you can use the same envelope template next time. Now, what changes on the letter uh, could be the uh, date that's at the top, um, and that's pretty much really the only thing you you change on an ongoing basis. So what you do in that case is just save a copy of your letter in a Word format. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as, um, and I'm going to browse to the location, and I'm going to save this as a Word document. Okay. Now, now the reason I want to do that and have a version of it in a docx file is the next time I do a mailing, all I have to really do is go into this uh, letter template in the Word format, open it up, change the date to something else. Uh, let's say I do it on the 28th, and then I'm going to go ahead, file, save as, browse, and then I'm going to save it as a PDF, um, and I'll change the date here to the 28th. And now I'm ready to go with my uh, mailing for the 28th. So that's the only thing that changes. And so I keep a, a copy of the editable uh, version, which is the docx version uh, on my computer so that I can change minor things. If I want to, you know, change the actual content of the letter at some point and tweak some things, um, maybe add in a couple sentences that I want to test, then I can also do that with using the Word document. Um, and then as long as I save it as a .pdf and send that PDF version over to letterprinting.net, they should be fine with that. All right, so hopefully this helps you guys out. Again, if you're using another print house, they probably have a, a, a different process, but it probably follows along the same concept of that they want a data list and a template because almost all uh, print houses that I know of uh, they do the mail merge on their end. So if you're not printing from home, you don't want to actually generate the mail merged documents. You only want to create one template file. As far as these merge fields go, um, the format that I just showed you, that's specific to letterprinting.net. If you use a different company, you're going to have to check with that company to see what kind of format they want that template in. Some companies uh, I know that we've used in the past, uh, like click to mail they actually have their own um, template building software where you actually go in there and create your uh, your letter template in uh, in their software. So you don't send them a PDF or anything like that. But it's the same concept. You're basically building the the letter uh, template, and then you're uploading your data list to them, and then they're going to do the merge uh, mail merge on their end, uh, print it, fold it, stuff it, stamp it, and put it in the mail for you.